Hi team! So this video is going to be about how to make a more complicated scatter plot, and with your research articles right around the corner, I thought that this would be a really useful resource for you. If you haven't seen my earlier video, which is linked around here somewhere, about how to make a more simple scatter plot, you're going to want to watch that one first because in that video I talk all about where the specific functions are in Excel and how to insert them and how to insert the chart, and how to change colors and all that kind of stuff. So if you don't know how to do that, watch that previous video because in this video I'm going to already assume that you know how to do that and this video is going to be primarily about how to organize your data into Excel to make some of these more complicated graphs. So just like last time I want to talk a little bit about the experimental setup. So as we discovered previously, the Great Terrible Dragon is an agricultural crop pest because it burns crops down, and scientists found that sodium solutions are the best at reducing dragon fire breath. And so then scientists wanted to determine what concentration of the sodium solution is the best at reducing the dragon fire breath, and they found that it was somewhere between 11 and 15 moles. However, there are a couple other dragons that are also agricultural crop pests, and so scientists want to determine if this solution concentration is equally as effective for these other dragons. So I have already set up the experimental data, and each block is a different dragon, and they're color-coded accordingly. And in the top row, I have my labels, and I've already calculated my averages and my standard deviation. You'll notice if I try and copy or highlight my labels and my averages like I did in the previous scatterplot video, that I'm going to get a really bizarre chart. So if I go into Insert, Graph, I get this chart that's like these different series, you don't even know what these are over here, it's just a big bundle of numbers that don't make any sense. So to make a chart that Excel can understand your data in, we need to make a table of our averages. And so I've set up over here a table of averages, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our averages that we already calculated into this new format and I'm just going to hit control C, which is the shortcut for copy. And then if you right click on the box that you want the values to appear in, you have to go to paste special and paste values. And that's because sometimes Excel, when it copies over functions, copies but then doesn't have like the reference list that I was talking about. And so you'll get a weird error message, but you can avoid that just by always just copying and inserting the numerical values. And once I do this, we're going to highlight the entire table that I just made, go into insert, and insert the scatter chart. And now that we have a scatter chart, you see that it makes a lot more sense. Our series label actually is useful this time because the column that I had set up has now actually become my series legend. However, it is not color coded properly, so we need to fix that first. So to change the color of my markers, I'm going to see that D terribleis that I want to be green is currently yellow, and right click and format data series and marker fill and solid fill, and I want it to be green. And close. And then I'm going to change my fire dragon to be yellow. And this is to avoid red and green in the same chart because red and green, red or green color blindness is the most common. And now we need to add our labels. So I'm just going to click on the chart, layout, and go to axis titles. SV. And we'll do the other title. and we'll add our chart title. Okay. 
So now that we have our labeled chart, we need to add in the error bars. And just like last time, we can't add in the error bars in the regular format. So I've already I've already calculated the standard deviations and I'm going to put them into a table similar to the averages over here just to make it a little bit easier for me to kind of know where everything is. This isn't really necessary, but it's really helpful for me just to organize my data so when I actually plug in the numbers into the chart, I don't get confused and click the wrong things. So now I'm going to actually add in the error bars by clicking on the series that I want. I'm going to error bars, more error bar options, customs, and specify value. And then I'm just going to actually specify the values for all of these. And remembering to get rid of the horizontal error bars. and getting rid of the horizontal error bars again. And now, just like last time, we need to fix our axes. We need to fix the y-axis because just like last time, our error bars made our y-axis go below zero and we can't have an axis that goes below zero because we can't have something fewer than zero fire breaths. So we're just going to go into the chart tools and the layout, axes, primary vertical axes, more options, fixed, and hit zero, hit close, and now our chart is fixed. Now we're going to add our trend lines. You'll probably just want to add the trend lines when you get more complicated graphs like this and not necessarily display the R squared values unless you're specifically asked to, that would go in the figure legend just because it'll make the chart too cluttered. But to add the trend line, you can just click on the series that you're interested in, trend line, a linear trend line, and you're going to want your trend lines to be the same color as your as the series that is representing. So you're going to click it and you'll right click format trend line and line color solid line and then I'm going to pick green. And then you do the same for the other two. Trend line linear. I'm going to set this one to blue. And we'll finally add one to the yellow. And now we'll edit our series legend because we don't need some of these lines because they're not really necessary in the legend and so we can just click on it and then hit delete on our keyboard and they go away. And there we have our chart and it seems like the 15 molar concentration of sodium works the best for all three dragons although you could probably get away with the 13 molar molarity if you just have the terrible dragon and the fire dragon as your main agricultural pests.